Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be finding a very interesting sum, an infinite sum. x plus x squared divided by 2 times 2 factorial plus x cubed divided by 3 times 3 factorial plus x to the 4th power divided by 4 times 4 factorial blah 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 x to the power n divided by n times n factorial. You get the pattern? Cool. That's the sum we're going to be dealing with today. All right. So you did not read it wrong. There is a two times two factorial at the bottom. Okay. Does that make sense? I know you probably thinking, oh, this looks like something I know, but we're not quite there. Guess what? We'll get there. All right. Cool. Cool. Now we can approach this problem in two different ways, even though they may not be considered different methods because they kind of use the same idea, but in different directions. You know what I'm talking about? When I say direction, I'm talking about calculus. Okay? So, first of all, let's start with something we know. Right? What do we know? Well, maybe we don't know anything. <laughs> well, at least you should know that we can write an infinite series for a function. I guess you could call it a power series or an infinite polynomial. For example, take f of x equals cosine of x, right? You can go ahead and suppose that this can be written as a sub 0 plus a sub 1x plus a sub 2x squared plus dot 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 a sub n x to the n, so on and so forth. Again, this is an infinite polynomial. That's why we usually call these an infinite series or a power series because of the powers of x. Wait a minute, cosine is a transcendental whatever, some crazy function. How can it be written as a polynomial? I didn't say a polynomial, I said an infinite polynomial. Make sense? And here's how we can do it. You start by replacing x with 0. And of course, you can replace x with 0 in two different places. For example, cosine 0 would be 1. You know that, right, from the unit circle. But on the right-hand side, all the way on the right-hand side, the, in the infinite polynomial case, everything that has x in it will disappear. That's what's really cool about 0. 0 is very powerful. People say, like, it's nothing. No, it's actually everything. Because if you multiply a million by 0, you get 0. It just annihilates everything. That's why sometimes it's called annihilator. Anyways, so we get a sub 0 from here. So that gives you the value of a sub 0 right away, awesome, beautiful. Now, we do need to get the values of other constants too, or coefficients, a sub 1, a sub 2, and so on and so forth. How do you do that? You need to get rid of a sub 1 and make the a sub 1, a sub 0, sorry. You need to get rid of this and make this a constant. That can be done by differentiation. That's the power of differentiation because you can take a polynomial and differentiate it infinitely many times, right? Especially if you have an infinite polynomial, you better differentiate it infinitely many times. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine. You know that, right? Hopefully. And then the derivative of this long infinite polynomial is, first of all, the derivative of the constant is zero. That's why it disappears. The derivative of a1x is basically, think of it like this. What is the derivative of 5x? 5. X? five. Think of 5x as y equals 5x. It's a line with slope 5. And the derivative is the rate of change. And for a linear function, the rate of change is the slope, which is 5. Make sense? So in this case, it's just going to be a sub 1. And then to differentiate this, you're going to bring the 2 to the front, so on and so forth, the rules of differentiation, blah, blah, blah. And then from here, you differentiate and replace x with 0. What is, what is sine 0? It's 0, right? What is negative 0? zero still negative one times zero right it's kind of like a weird question and then here if you replace x with zeros these are all zeros you're gonna get a sub one hmm a sub one is zero a sub zero is one hmm. are they gonna just interchange no actually every other coefficient from now on is gonna be zero because if you think about it the derivative of cosine is negative sine the derivative of negative sine is negative cosine the derivative of negative cosine is sine you get the idea it's a cycle okay so if they ask you the 125th derivative of sine x, you can find it. Okay? So where do we go from here? So this is for cosine, but I could do the same thing for e to the power x. And why would I think of e to the power x here? Because the factorial pattern 
and especially something that looks like this. I have an x squared and 2 factorial, x cubed and 3 factorial. But I have these extra numbers. Don't worry, we'll take care of them. We'll do a little bit of hocus pocus. Okay, and I'll be introducing a very nice function that you probably haven't seen before. If you've seen it, please let us know in the comment section down below because that'll be interesting. Anyways, e to the power x can be written also as a polynomial, an infinite polynomial, and it's equal to or equivalent to 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial, right? So this is e to the power x, but well, wait a minute. I have an extra one here, so here's what I'm going to do. Again, a little bit of hocus pocus. We're going to go ahead and subtract one from both sides, and that'll be the first step. Don't worry, we'll get there. It's only going to take the one to the left. And then, we want this to start with one again. Isn't that weird? Like, why did you get rid of one if you wanted to start? Yes, but I wanted to start, uh, I wanted to start a little differently, okay? You'll see in a little bit what I'm doing with the hocus pocus thingy. Divide by x, that's going to give us 1 again. Yay, I can do that. Beautiful. And then, by the way, these converge, so you can do these things, right? Wait, I'm so close, but I do need something like this, right? Look at that. Uh-oh, I, I need to get an x from 1, and I need to get this from here. So, you know what that means? You need to do the opposite of differentiation. What is it? It's called integration. So we're going to integrate both sides. Awesome. Integrate, integrate with respect to x, of course. So I'm going to put a little dx here and a little dx here, but I don't think there's enough room. So let's move this guy over here a little bit. There we go. And squeeze in a little dx there. All right, cool. Now, when I integrate it, it's going to be like an integral. But on the right-hand side, this is going to be x. This is going to be x. Now think about the integral of x. How do you integrate x? You increase the power by 1 and divide by that new power. When you differentiate, you bring the power to the front and reduce the power. You see? You just reverse the process. It's called reverse engineering or just integration. So uh, the integral of x, by the way, it's kind of funny because I was going to take a class from a community college. And that was just for my teaching credential. And I was supposed to take um, calculus because it will be easy for me and I just needed units. And then um, I went to the, um, I missed the test. There was a placement test that I missed. And I went to uh, the testing center and they told me to see the department chair. I, I walked up to his room and he asked me a question. He said, what's the integral of x? What's the integral of x squared? I answered those questions correctly and then I got in. I didn't have to take the placement. Anyways, that was just a quick story that I wanted to share with you. I hope you like it. Now, uh, where am I? Okay, we're integrating. So the integral of x is x squared divided by 2, but there's another number, 2 factorial, so we kind of need to multiply them at the bottom. Integral of this is going to be, uh, wait a minute, it's not x cubed. <laughs> it's supposed to be x squared over, what did I do? Okay, let's see. Uh, this would be, yeah, that would be an x, I forgot to divide by x. Okay, here we go. This should be an x squared. That's why it's messed up. Okay, never mind. So now when you integrate x squared, it's going to be x cubed over 3, but x cubed over 3 times 3 factorial. In other words, we have what we need on the right-hand side, so this would be the answer. But the million-dollar question is, what is that thing, right? Let's go ahead and split it up. So we can write this as this minus this. And guess what this is equal to? This is a new thing that I'm introducing. Uh, probably some of you knew about it. This is called EI of x. And this is obviously ln absolute value of x. And don't forget your constant. And what, guess what this is called? This is called the exponential integral. And there's another way to express it, but let's just leave it at that. Keep it simple for now. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.